Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra, Quiz 16. We're giving a 3x3 three three matrix A for us to find the basis of R3 consisting of eigenvectors of A. And then we're supposed to use our basis from part A to diagonalize A. Okay, great. Um, part A is a loaded question because in order to get the eigenvectors, we first have to find the eigenvalues. So let's go looking for eigenvalues. Remember, eigenvalues are defined to be um, real numbers, lambda, so that there are corresponding non-zero vectors x, so that ax equals lambda x. As we showed in class, this is equivalent to, when I subtract that over, trying to find non-zero solutions to this problem. So, Basically, what I need to do is find the values of lambda so that this matrix isn't invertible, and that's where the determinant comes in. So I set the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero, and this gives me the characteristic polynomial of that matrix. And so as we've discussed in class, when you subtract lambda i from a matrix, you're just subtracting lambda off the diagonals. And I want to expand this determinant, and I look for the most efficient way to do that. And row 2 looks good because there's lots of zeros in there. So I follow the sign pattern, plus, minus, plus. Um, so this would be minus, plus, minus. So when I do the cofactor there, I get a positive negative 2 minus lambda times the determinant. Wipe out the row and column that's in. So I get negative 2 minus lambda times negative 17 minus lambda times 16 minus lambda minus negative 9 times 30, and that's plus 270. So now I just need to sort out what's happening in here, and then that'll uh, hopefully that'll factor nicely, and I can get my eigenvalues from that. Okay, so I just plug along here, minus 2 minus lambda times negative 17 times positive 16 is negative 272. Negative 17 times negative lambda is a positive 17 lambda. Negative lambda times 16 is minus 16 lambda. Negative lambda times negative lambda is a positive lambda squared. And then I've got that 270 hanging around from before. So I get negative 2 minus lambda times. I've got a lambda squared plus lambda minus 2 equal to 0. And so I... Uh, this factors nicely for me, and I get that. So, when I identify my uh, eigenvalues, what do I get? From here, I get lambda equals negative 2. From here, I get lambda equals negative 2. From here, I get lambda equals 1. So, as we talked about in class, the fact that I got negative 2 twice means that the algebraic multiplicity of negative 2 is 2. Can't spell there. Here the algebraic multiplicity, since I only got it once, is 1. And I'm guaranteed an eigenvector, at least one eigenvector per eigenvalue. So the fact that I'm, I'm guaranteed at least one eigenvector for this guy means that I'm going to have everything I need from here. What I'm hoping now is I get two linearly independent eigenvectors for lambda equals negative 2, so that I can get uh, three vectors total then as a basis for R3. So now we look at lambda is negative 2. 
So I'm looking at solving a minus lambda i x is 0. Lambda is negative 2, so it's really a plus 2i x is 0. I'm going to let x be the unknown vector. And I look at the augmented matrix I get from this system. I'm going to basically be adding 2 to each of these values. So negative 15, negative 3, negative 9. 0, add 2, 0, 0, and then 30, 6, 16. Oops. And technically I have an augmented matrix here, but the, um, the constant column is going to be all zeros. Okay, so A plus 2I, I'm adding 2 to the diagonals, and of course I see right away I did not add 2 to this diagonal. I apologize for that. Okay, so add 2 to the diagonals, and everything else is the same. I'm going to put this in row echelon form. I can divide this by negative 15. I get 1, 1 fifth, 3 fifths, 0, 0, 0. I get a row of zeros there. And it's clear if I multiply by 2 and add that that's going to uh, zero that out as well. So we got two rows of zeros here. That means we're going to have two free variables, which is good. So what? Uh, what's my solution? I get when I take these out. I get x one plus a fifth x two plus three fifths x three is zero. 0 equals 0, 0 equals 0. This tells me that x2 and x3 are free. Okay, so from uh, this equation then, I get x1 is minus 1 fifth x2 minus 3 fifths x3. So if I look for my solution to that system, x1, I plug that in, x2 and x3 are free, and so we break this down like we've been doing since the second week of class into the x2 part. So the coefficient of x2 here is minus a fifth, coefficient of x2 there is 1, and then that's 0, plus x3, coefficient there is negative 3 fifths, 0, 1. Okay, so I could pick those as my uh, two of my basis vectors for R3. They're linearly independent, you can see, because they have leading ones in different places. But I can take any multiple of those. And so what I'm tempted to do is uh, multiply by 5 to, to kill off the fractions. Alright, so... Um, these two vectors represent a basis for the eigenspace. We talked about that in class last time. Uh, the eigenvectors I'm going to pick out of this, though, I'm going to just multiply by 5 and have negative 1, 5, 0, and negative 3, 0, 5. So these are two of my three basis vectors for R3.